G'day everyone, uh, I thought I would just take the time to give you a little bit of a content informational video um, about decking and the problems and the timbers. Um, it's a problem that I'm facing in my own home and I actually had my uncle call me on the weekend because he had a couple of problems as well. So if you have a pre-existing deck and say the decking boards are, are ready to get replaced or you're looking at building a new deck, uh, there's plenty of different types of timbers you can choose. So you've got your treated pine, you've got all your hardwoods, um, a lot of common ones are spotted gum, merbau. At my house, I'm using silver top ash. Um, there's a lot of redwoods, um, mixed reds, uh, jarra, black butt is very common as well. A lot of different hardwoods you can use as deck decking, and they come in a few different sizes. Standard sizes would be you're around the 90 mil bar wide by 18 to 20 mil thick, uh, and then they jump up to around the 140 mil, 130 to 140 mil, and they can also be 18 mil thick, or they can even jump up to thicker boards. Uh, and I believe you can even go custom mill boards, depending on the type of look you're going for. At my house personally, I've used uh, silver top ash, and that's 90 by um, 20, that's 90 by 20 mil, I'm pretty sure. Um, and the different, when you are laying the boards, different spacing types. So you, you've chosen your, you've chosen your timber, and now when you go to do your spacings, what would you do for your spacings? I, I used to do uh, a four mil spacing. Now I've upped that to a five mil spacing, but I had my uncle call me and he actually had a problem where he used a three mil packer. So he used a three mil packer and he had a tarp that laid over his deck. Once a bit of water got under that tarp, those boards swelled up. Now, I've had this problem at my own place where I have used a five mil spacing and the boards have swelled up due to the rain, which is fair enough, it's gonna get rained on, it's gonna get the sun anyway. They've swelled up and now the boards are touching. I've also had other problems where we've used a, a, a packer, say a five mil or a four mil packer, and the boards have shrunk. So then that spacing has gone up to seven or eight mil, which doesn't look good either. So it's hard to, to know what the tin wants to do. It's a natural product. It's going to um, do what it wants to do. So my timber that I used was uh, very, very dry when I got it. Um, it didn't have many oils in it. And as soon as that rain hit it, it's absorbed it and it's swelled up. Where the, uh, some other timbers will be full of oils. I know that Spotted Gum and Merva have a lot of natural oils in them and they might tend to shrink. Depending on the timber, depending on where you live, um, it, you can't, you can't really stop the timber from doing what it's gonna do. The screws are gonna make it stay straight, but at the end of the day, if it wants to expand or it wants to shrink, it's going to do what it wants to do. Now, as well as timber, you could also use an array of composite timber. So that's a, a man-made product, whether it be out of plastic um, or PVC or whatever whatever they wanna to use to create that decking board. You've got stuff like Modwood, Eco Deck that Bunning sells. There is so many on the market uh, and they are maintenance free. So they, they give you a certain warranty on them. They're maintenance free. Some of them come even with a bushfire rating. Um, they are very durable. They can tend to scratch because they are a plastic. They can tend to scratch as well with furniture moving across them, but so can your normal decking boards. Um, and they are a bit more expensive than your standard timber. But in saying that, you're saving on your maintenance costs down the line, as well as your oiling and your staining. They also come with concealed fixings, so you don't have to see your screws um, if you don't wanna go down that path. Uh, so they have their own pros and cons, um, as well as timber as well. With standard timber decks, um, your fixings, so your fixings, uh, the old traditional way they used to nail their decks. Now it's a lot more everyone's screwing them. Whether they go, you go for stainless steel screws or you go for uh, like a treated treated screw. I always use a stainless steel square drive screw, and I, I just believe that they look the nicest. Depending on the the size of the board is the size of the screw you'd like to use, and also what you're drilling into. If you're drilling into hardwood, you could probably use a shorter 50 mil screw for an 18 mil board. Um, but if you're using going into softwood, you might want to up it to 65 mil, so it's actually going down into the timber further. Uh, any other problems with um, timber decks 
is they can also, also cup as well. So that's why you really wanna um, invest in a nice fixing method um, that's gonna stop that board from cupping um, upwards or downwards and it's gonna basically hot clamp that board down to the, um, the joist that it's running on and that's gonna stop that cupping action. The knowing when to oil. Uh, this is something that I've played around with over my years of being a carpenter. I have done projects where, completed projects where I've oiled straight away, and I've also completed projects where I've waited for the boards to weather, um, and I've oiled them after. At the moment, the process, what I'm doing now is I am applying, laying the deck, I'm letting it weather, I'm letting the sun and the rain do what it needs to do to the deck. Uh, generally, you with oily boards, the, they don't need, they won't take the oil straight away. I wait until um, when it rains or if you hose the deck. If the water's still but, um, sitting on top of the decking board and it's not soaking into it, I don't believe it needs an oil in. Um, but as soon as that water starts sit, soaking into the grain, that's when I know I want to apply. And what I do before I apply that oil is I get a big sander, whether it be a floor sander, depending on the size of the deck, floor sander, belt sander, a couple of different sanders, give that deck a big sand. Because what I find happens with the weathering is it really sort of furs up the deck. All it's it, little splinters and stuff start to come up. I know with my um, silver top ash at home, um, which has a lot more natural defects, it's really starting to um, splinter up. And um, a lot of the defects are starting to raise. So what I'll do is I'll go through with a floor sander, I'll completely sand that whole deck, um, and before I floor sand, I'll make sure all my screws are sunken down uh, two mil. That way I'm not gonna take any screw heads off, I'm not gonna ruin the sander. And I'll sand that whole deck, and then I'll apply my coat after. And it's, from the past jobs that we've been doing that, they've come up really, really, really nice. Now, when to apply an oil later on, I follow the same rule of thumb. You're gonna be able to know when your deck's starting to discolor, you gotta obviously be able to visually see it, but the test that I give it is putting water on it. If the water sits on top of it, um, and stays on top of there, um, and doesn't soak in, then I know it's not really ready for an oil yet, um, but as soon as that water starts soaking into that grain, I know it's ready for an oil. There are so many different oils and stains out there, it's totally up to you what you want to use. There's all different ones. I know Bunnies has got um, Feet Watson and Cabots and there's um, Intergrain, plenty of different oils. Depending on the look that you want to achieve, uh, they all, all come with their own different products. Some are real, um, some are oils, some are stains, some have a mixture. Uh, depending on whether you want to change the look of your deck and boards or just have a clear oil over the top, uh, there's yeah, many different ones. I am going to use the Feet Watson. Um, or and I've also used the Integrain. The Integrain is also a really good product. Uh, but as I said, there are pr plenty of different uh, products you can use, and probably speaking to your local um, paint supplier or your local bunning store for for what you want to use there. Also, when you do go to re-oil your deck, also give it a good clean. So with the deck wash, I know that's going to strip out a lot of the tenons, and there's some deck washes out there that uh, aren't really that good for the timber but um, giving it a good wash, making sure it's nice and clean. If it does get a bit furry, giving it a sand back and then oiling it. And you probably got to do that, especially in the Australian climate around here, probably once every four to six months, depending on what aspect that deck face is. That deck's facing north, it's going to get sun all day long and um, it's going to weather a lot faster than a deck that's going to be on the southern side of the house that's going to get a bit of shade most of the year. So. A bit of information around uh, decking, what boards to choose, what screws, um, what oils and when to oil it. I hope you found this um, informative. If you have any other questions on this, um, feel free to get in contact with us. Just email, go through our website and email us. Um, and I look forward to doing some more content uh, videos for you later on.